What's up guys, FM Campbell here and welcome to episode number two of the Aston Villa series that we have going on. If you want to check out the introduction before seeing what's been going on, feel free to do so. The link will be in the description. Um, so let's get straight into it. Uh, there's been a lot happened. Um, I said I was going to do an update just before the first day of the season. I've actually gone through to the end of the transfer window for you guys. I want to do a full cap, a full uh, cover of the whole transfer window and what's been going on and how we've also got on with our current results that have been coming in and as we've been playing. So, where to start? I think let's start from the very, very beginning and let's have a look at our transfers. What's been happening? Well, who's gone? Who's come in? Right, I've tried to have been as smart as possible. Um, obviously, we have a lot of under-21s, a lot of under-18s that I want to get out on loan and try and release um, some of these wages to make them available for other players of higher quality, sometimes even for cheaper. Um, so we'll go through the um, outgoings first. Remember, all loans were 100% wages as a playing as a key player um, and also in their preferred position or the position where I want them to be playing. So we've got Josh Webb or Joshua Webb gone to Portsmouth on loan. Bradley Watkins to Chester on loan. Alfie Crooks to Forest Green on loan. We then sold Shea Given for 400k to Liverpool, which I was very happy with. Um, he's 38 years old. He was on 53 grand a week for us, um, and yeah, I was, I was a little bit worried that he might ask for us to pay some of his wages until the end of his contract. Fortunately for us, that wasn't the case, and as you can see, we've got um, sort of 75% or 25% more than his actual value since he's moved over. So 400k, I was very, very pleased with. Um, Benjamin Segrist has gone to Leighton Orient on loan. Alan Hutton to QPR for £5 million. Again, another one I was quite happy with. He's on a lot of money wages-wise. Um, his value was always going to dip, especially at 29 years old. And I just felt that I had um, potentially better players coming in. But yeah, Alan Hutton has gone to QPR for £5 million. So a good little bit of business. Ricardo Calder has gone to Lincoln on loan. Khalid Abdo to Gateshead on loan. Andy Vyman has gone to QPR on loan. Um, so we'll see what happens to him in the future and whether we decide to sell him or keep him. Um, I'll tell you reasons why we let him go shortly. Gabby Bonglehor we managed to rake in £10 million pounds for. Um, he's already had four pinches in the season and not scored a single goal. An average rate is 6.6, so it's looking to be a good bit of business. Um, he was also on quite a bit of money. The fans weren't too concerned, which was surprising, as he is a, um, a club idol. So that was very, very pleasing to let him go for such a big, hefty amount. Great for the um, finances for us going forward. Um, Yanoi Dossian has gone to Port Vale on loan. Graham Burke to Plymouth on loan. Danny O'Brien to Bristol Rovers on loan. Lewis Kinsella to Eastleigh on loan. Liam Bateman to Lincoln. Tom Strain to Bath. Courtney Wilding to Altrincham. Um, Gerald Sellers to Macclesfield, Thomas Zavri Zazrivec to North Ferriby, um, Dylan Forth to Bath, Cody Lyons, Lyons Foster, Lyons Foster um, to Bromley, Ryan Strain to Oxford, or Oxford City, uh, Kozak's gone to Burnley on loan, so I was quite happy with that, paying all of his wages, hopefully we can either keep his value around that mark or uh, make some more, I um, was thinking about selling him. Um, but he's only recently joined, so it would have been tough to get a, a decent amount for him. Um, Nathan Baker's also gone to Crystal Palace on loan. Um, I'm just not really convinced by the level that he's at, so they're paying all of his wages again. Um, and Hopefully we can keep that um, value up, if not get higher. Philippe Sanderos, just not a fan. He looks good on here, but I'm just not a fan. I'm very, very concerned about his physicals. Look at the, the acceleration and 9 agility of 8 and the natural fitness of 10. Will one of my... Um, main pet peeves with him so I decided to let him go 29 years old he's obviously on loan um, and we'll probably look to sell him in the future um, Enrique um, I'll explain who that is shortly and Juma I'll also explain and so we'll move on to the ins we signed the one and only Edda Alvarez Balanta a lot of these transfers to start off with it may appear um, that this, that's the fee but it's not it'll be like a 1.5 million pound fee and four point and, and sorry and the rest over 48 months um, I'm taking a little bit of a jump at that just because we have to get these players in um, otherwise we're just going to end up falling backwards and just take the cut um, each window transfer wise but hopefully it'll be a gamble and we can get some finances coming in we signed Mosquito on a free he's a cheeky little um, uh, free 
a free agent at the beginning of the game. Um, his finishing and composure isn't great for a striker, um, but yeah, he's got uh, quite a bit of potential. 18 years old, he's already worth 975k, 6.5k a week, so very, very cheap. He's got good potential as well, so I was quite happy bringing him in. Jumar is also another one that we've brought in um, on a free. The value already 5 million, 28 years old, 16 grand a week. Defensive midfielder, he looks quite versatile, he's a little bit versatile, he looks quite good actually across the board. Um, but he does need a work permit, so that's the reason why he went on loan to Bromby, obviously paying all of his wages. And we'll probably look to sell him in the future, um, as he's not the best player, but he's a little bit of a money maker for us. And the same with Mosquito, he's obviously gone on loan. Uh, sorry, not Mosquito, we'll come on. it was uh, Enrique, who we'll come on to in a second. Lucas Romero, one of my boys, one of my favourite FM players at the moment. Um, 20 years old. Uh, he's Argentinian, he come from Velez, we signed him for a total amount of 8.75 million. Um, I wonder if... Uh, and let us, so... There's the clauses and stuff on his contract, it doesn't actually say what, what we've paid. Um, so yeah, uh, Lucas Romero, 8.75 million from Velez, he's a very very good player, potential to be probably one of the best, if not the best in our squad. Um, bags of potential, the the heights he could probably reach will be huge for us. Um, the also good thing is a defensive midfielder and a central midfielder um, where I've been playing a defensive midfielder. We'll go into the tactics shortly, but yeah, you get what I mean. Matthias Zimmerman, 85k, a little cheeky, um, cheap buy. He's actually a backup right back for Matt Lowton um, since the departure um, of, um, what's his name? Uh, what's his bloody name? Where is he? Of it's five minutes. Alan Hutton. Don't know why I forgot that. Yeah, Matthias Zimmerman. He's the same level as Hutton. Um, believe it or not. So yeah, quite pleased with him. Very very cheap. Twenty two years old. Already worth two hundred seventy five k. So we're gonna make a bit of money on him hopefully. And he's our backup right back for now. Enrique's the one I mentioned that's gone back out on loan. He's a left back. He's got great potential. Uh, we decided. I, I, I'll tell you the reason why I decided to let him go out on loan. I wanted him to get first team football early doors. And the reason for letting him go is we actually signed Marcus Alonso on loan from Fiorentina and paying 7.5k a week in wages and we're paying a 20k monthly fee. Um, he is back up to Ali Sissoko at left back. Um, so yeah, I was quite pleased with that loan fee, as you can see, loan fee 20k. Gaston Gil Romero was another Argentinian central midfielder we sold. We actually have the two Romero or the Romero brothers and we've actually got Gaston Romero We've got Lucas Romero, Carl's Gill, and Gaston Gill Romero. So we've got the Gill Romero triplet, if you like, in central midfield. Um, 7.25 million is his value. We signed him for 6.25 um, from Estudiantes. 22 grand a week, so very, very cheap. Uh, contract's obviously five years of full whack. And yeah, again, great potential, according to the assistant, um, similar to Lucas Romero. Uh, the Marcus Alonso, we've already been through. Simao. You may recognise this guy. Um, he's played for Atletico, Benfica, Barcelona, Sporting for a couple of years, um, Besiktas and Espanyol. We signed him on a free. Um, he's basically cover on the left-hand side for Grealish um, or in Zogbia, depending on who we decide to play there. So yeah, 10 grand a week, you can't really go wrong. Um, his contract's only a year long, so we'll decide what we're going to do with him, how much he deteriorates as one of the older players. Um, in the future, I weirdly is still wanted by clubs, which is strange. I think that's because they probably wanted him as we wanted him. Um, Duvan Zapata, quite pleased with this guy actually. Um, he was signed him on loan. The loan fee is sixty grand a month. Uh, we're paying him seven point five k a week, so you can kind of do the maths of how much it's costing us a month. Um, so it'd be twenty eight on top of that, so it's eighty eight k a month. Um, and yeah, so what's that? Twenty two, twenty two k a week is costing us. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased with him, actually. I think it'll be a battle between him and Benteke up top. Um, I just like his finishing and composure is quite high, especially for 23-year-old. Uh, he's on loan from Napoli. I wanted to sign him, but they thought that he would fail a work permit, which was a bit of a shame. But, uh, weirdly, he can come on loan. Then the legend, Javier Saviola. He signed 32 years old. We signed him for 325k. His contract is for three years. Um... I, it was just all he would take. 
Um, I'll probably sell him at the end of the season or sort of January, maybe next season, depending on what happens. The likelihood is he will moan about first team football, but I don't really care. He's 16.5k a week in wages. You can get some a um, lot worse players for that much money, so I was quite pleased with that. Um, yeah, and he signed for 325k. And he's got still got good potential. He's three star, obviously behind Zapata and Benteke. So that's the transfer ins and outs. Um, let's actually have a look at the team. We're quite weak on the wing. Uh, we have two keepers in Brad Gujan and we brought Jed Steer into the first team. We've got Matt Lowton at right back with Zimmerman as our second choice. A little bit concerned about right back at the moment. Alice Sissoko as our first choice left back with Marcus Alonso as the backup. Again, a little bit concerned about that. Then we have a centre back pairing of Ron Vlaar and Balanta with Akore and Clark as backup. Um, in defensive midfield, we have Gaston Gui Romero with Carlos Sanchez um, rotating. Sorry, Lucas Romero with Carlos Sanchez uh, rotating. Uh, and then the central midfield on the left, we'll be playing Gaston Gui Romero or Fabian Delph, depending on what we decide. Uh, or if not, it'll be Gaston Gui Romero. Or um, we've got a choice of so many central midfielders. We have um, Ashley Westwood, uh, Bakuna can play in there, Delph can play in there. We've got Cleverly as well. Lucas Romero can play there if we need him to, but he's probably going to be a defensive midfielder pro primarily. And then Gaston Guillermo as well. Um, then in the attacking centre midfielder role, slash attacking sort of behind the front man, we probably won't play that formation too much. We've got Joe Cole and Carl's Gill as our choices. Um, and Zogbia will probably play on the right or the left, probably the right-hand side more than anywhere. Um, we did try to sell him along with Westwood and Kieran Richardson, because Kieran Richardson is not just not one of my players. In fact, he'll probably be in the under-21s very, 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 very quickly. So yeah, on the left-hand side, we got either a choice of Grealish or Shimao, or Simao on the left. And on the right-hand side, we have a choice of Carl's Gill um, or Zogbia. So it's Simao, Grealish and Zogbia and Gill that are wingers. Um, two of them aren't really natural wingers, so we are very, very tight on the wing. I've tried to loan players, but they just weren't interested. Um, the likes of Adamar Traore, um, Andrija Zivkovic, who else did we try and loan? Uh, Pione, Sister Pione. Um, Munir from Barcelona, we tried him on the wing, but unfortunately we had no luck whatsoever. Up front, we have a choice of four. We either have Benteke um, or Zapata. And as you can see there, I thought they'd be challenging. And according to the assistant, he agrees. Then we have Mosquito, uh, sorry, Saviola as our third choice with Mosquito as our fourth. We may look to loan out Mosquito in the future because we only play one striker. Um, as you can see, we'll go into the tactics now. We'll primarily be playing this formation, um, something along the lines of this. So we've got... Guzan, Shisoko, Balanta, Vla, Bakuna. Um, he'll be normally Matt Lowton, but Matt Lowton needs a rest at the moment. Romero holding with Gil Romero um, in the central midfield role, and then it'll probably be um, Fabian Delph on the right hand side, but he may operate if Gil Romero is ever injured or tired. Then we have Grealish and Nzogbia on the wings, obviously, with um, the likes of Gil that cover on the left and. Um, who else was the other one that I mentioned? The other... Wait, oh, Shamal. So they can rotate. And then up top, normally we'll play Benteke, but he's injured for God knows how long. Um, and yeah, uh, if not, um, Zapata. So it'll be again a rotation thing. Now, I bring up Benteke. Benteke has actually started moaning already. He's not even back to full training, and he's moaning about a move, especially to Roma. Um, Liverpool and Roma are both interested in him. And I'm a little bit concerned that he might bring down the squad morale because a lot of them think that he's a good player for the squad and they're happy to be playing with him and all sorts. So I'm um, a little bit concerned of what to do. Um, he's, a couple of times he said that he wants to move or why have I not let them, because they made bids, and why have I not let them him speak to them and, and all sorts. So um, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, let's go and find out what we actually did in the league. Um, as you can see, a topsy-turvy start to the season. Uh, the friendlies, we lost 1-0 to Dumbarton. Obviously, I had my assistant take control of these. 1-0 to Dumbarton, we lost. We, then we beat Toronto FC 2-0. Um, Cuban, we lost. Or Cuban, we lost 1-0. Then Dover, we beat 1-0. Uh, 
Catania we beat 2-0, lost 2-0 to DC United and then we started in the Premier League where we played Leicester in the first game away at the King Power Stadium and we lost 2-1 and it was actually Ron Vlaar the captain with the consolation goal. We then finally got, well, I say finally, we then got our first win of the season and the first Premier League win of the save and we played Southampton and it was actually um, a very, very good win um, at home, so at Villa Park and Grealish got the winner. We then scraped through a Capital One Cup second round after a nil-nil draw. Um, we beat them on penalties. As you can see, we played the second string um, team to start off with a couple of players that were coming back from fitness as well. And then we returned to losing ways against Hull. We got battered 3-0. No one scored. Um, and yeah, I was not happy. But we actually had a lot of injuries and we still have a lot of injuries um, the likes, I mean, Mosquito was playing, so that means that there was no Benteke, no Zapata, and no Saviola. Um, so, yeah, I was a little bit annoyed with that. Our next games are Burnley and Man City, and we have a little bit of a tough run in sort of the big teams are dotted around in this area. Um, so, yeah, but the next games we'll be covering are Burnley, Man City, QPR, and Arsenal in the next episode. So, this is what it's done for us in the league. Not a great start. We're in our media predicted position of 14th. We've got one win and three. Um, obviously, that win against Southampton. So we're sat in 14th place on three points, minus three goal difference. Um, we scored four, five and yeah, no, scored two, uh, scored two and conceded five. So minus three goal difference. Tottenham are currently top, um, a joint with Chelsea and Arsenal, all on nine points. So yeah, not going too well. Um, aside to that though, Gaston Gil Romero has been in not bad form. Um, so let's go and have a look at him in the squad. So we've got the Romero, the Gil Romero triplet. Um, so Gaston Gil Romero has not been doing, I say that, he wasn't doing too bad in the last games. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much all that's been going on. In regards to the Capital One Cup. The draw has not been done. Oh, it has been done, sorry. We've got QPR in the Capital One Cup third round. Um, yes, as you can see the, the likes of Fulham, Reading, Southampton, Everton, Oxford, Newcastle, Liverpool, Chelsea, Middlesbrough, Hull, Leicester, Bolton, West Brom, Derby, Palace, Burnley, Scunfort, Tottenham, Swindon, Sunderland, Watford, West Ham, Villa, QPR, um, Swansea, Arsenal, Stoke United, Wigan, Blackburn and Norwich against Man City. Um, I'd like to beat QPR. I think we can beat QPR, then they're not the best of teams. Um and hopefully we can progress a little bit further in that tournament. Um so yeah, that's pretty much it. In the next episode I'll be covering the tactics that I'll be playing, or I have been playing. So free free feel free to check that out. In regards to our finances, we do have a little bit of money in the bank. Um upwards of three point four million um tops. So there's a little bit of money there. Finances, we've managed to bring some money in. Um Two million. The balance has gone up two million. Uh, the projected balance, obviously, has risen as well. Um, the percentage of the transfer revenue has been lowered to fifty percent, um, which is what we've been working on through pretty much the whole of the transfer window. So yeah, that's pretty much all that's been happening. So yeah, tactics in the next episode. I will be going through them with with you guys uh, in a little bit more depth. Feel free to leave a like. Feel free to comment. Any advice, get it in, um, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.